storm force winds and rainfall accumulations of 3 to 6 inches are forecast. Severe thunderstorm activity may cause multiple interruptions to power utilities and services. strengthens into a hurricane. The government of Barbados has upgraded the hurricane watch to a hurricane warning. Hurricane Sue continues to intensify as it is expected to become a major hurricane before reaching Barbados late Sunday night. On the current projected track, the center of barrel is expected to pass 40 miles south of Barbados. It is Saturday, the day before the storm. Um, which is expected to become a hurricane and um, just came from the gas station and it was pure hell to get gas uh, everyone is trying to get gas the supermarket seems to be full um, the supermarket now and I'm going to grab some essentials and um, take you guys with me <laughs> Cereal are literally empty. This is crazy. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, the bread is gone too. Even the cat food is out. <laughs> Bitches ain't playing, boys. Okay, so I'm definitely prepared. Got all the canned food. I even got this little um, first aid kit. So I will show you guys that and see what's in it. Um, but I didn't get a flashlight and we don't have candles. I have like scented candles. I don't have normal candles. So I'm going to head to the mall, Charity Mall, and see if I can get some candles and a flashlight. Finally found them. Affordable, too expensive. Now to find some basic candles. The lady sent me so I can get this rechargeable. Hurricane Barrel continued to strengthen during the day and at 5 p.m. today, Saturday the 29th of June 2024, was located near 10.1 North, 49.3 West, or 720 miles east southeast of Barbados. Okay, I don't think I've ever been this prepared for a hurricane. I've never had this many tin products in my home. I don't eat tin products but non-perishables is a necessity. And yeah, this is everything I got today to prepare for the hurricane. Um, the hurricane that was once a tropical depression, literally an hour ago. It's now a category one hurricane. So, uh, and it hasn't even gone here yet. So, let's see. Essentials for hurricane preparedness. Of course, non-perishables. You've got your canned products, tuna, hot dog, sardine, more tuna, corn, um, yeah. You know, there are other types, there's like spam, you guys know spam, there's lunch and meat and corned beef, but I really don't eat them anymore, um, so I'm not going to buy them. So I just got a couple of things I know I'll eat for sure. Um, dry stuff, got cereal over here, one cereal. Two cereal, three cereals. We've got well, Bisco biscuits, and they have like a whole big selection for you guys that are from Barbados and you know with Bisco, Soda Bix, and Eclipse. Well, now they have all these really cool types. So I've got those Ziploc bags. I got some Ziploc bags because I wanted to try to put all of my 
you know, important documents into a Ziploc bag. I do have them in like a gold carrier case kind of thing, but I want to be sure that I had those, that I get them protected by water. The thing is, Barbadians are notorious for ignoring hurricane warnings. Um, there's this thing that said that God is a Bajan, so we tend not to pay attention and we're like, oh, you just pass over. And we get a little bit of a win here and a win there from literally the tales of other things. But this one is going to be passed over Barbados. So I think it's time we need to pay attention and stop thinking God is a Bajan, he's going to protect us. So I am going to be 100% here. I also got some nuts. Um, now the thing is, I was trying to find candles, just basic white candles. And I can find candles that are just basic and reasonable. Like people wanted to charge me $7 for a candle because it was colored. Bro, I just want a normal candle. So I got these ones from the $3 store. Yes, they were $3. Um, some would say, oh, these aren't going to last very long. Um, for me, I've, I've used them before and they last pretty long. So you're good by Lady Essentials. Um, toiletries, extra cat food, and if you don't know, now you know, some salt meat. This was what's the go-to for Barbadian homes in terms of food, and um, actually it's pretty good in like rice and stews and stuff, and soups as well. Uh, salted pork tails. Oh no. I really, I guess this is it. I, is it always called salt and pork tails? Because I'm just hoping for just salt meat. I may have taken out the wrong thing. Oh well. So it's, it's preserved, cured meat, I think. I don't think you have to put this in the fridge, but I will because it was not in the fridge. In the supermarket, it was on the shelf. So. But I'm still paying for it. Yeah. And of course, water. Now I opted for this one instead of the little bottles of water because. I already have other bottles of water here. Forgive me if you can see me spreading, I can't tell, but I feel like I'm sweating up a storm. So yeah, oh, I also got first aid kit. I also got a flashlight in case the candles aren't enough. You know, you need to move around. And some batteries. The only thing I'm missing is a radio. Um, uh, I do have my phone, I do have data, um, but yeah, I really should get rid of
for fishing boat owners and operators as their livelihoods taken by a surging sea driven by storm force winds from category 4 hurricane barrel these boats represent millions of dollars in investment at least 20 are lost smashed until they sink below the surface scores more suffer significant damage from the battering waves honestly we just hoping for the best you understand i have watched three boats sink so far since i've been here you understand i've watched one break in half so much destruction is in here right now so much destruction <laughs> the number of boats that we have lost that have actually sunk and broken up we do not know you see surges are coming in as hard as possible and it's actually crashing boats and so forth most of you look around most of the fishermen and boat owners are here but Men are in tears, women are in tears. This is a tough time now for the fishing industry. Chief Fisheries Officer Dr. Shellyann Cox has been undertaking preliminary assessments. It's the first step to determine the full scope of this devastating blow to the fishing industry. Crystal Hoyt, CBC News.